we saw, you know, Cameron Waters had great speed, mossed it to your point, but Brody Stecky also had really fast speed. Was there a moment for you, Shane, where you thought, I know who I'm racing now, I know who the guys are going to be that'll be there at the end? Uh, yeah, in that first stint when I was racing Brody and Chaz, they were probably the strongest, but I didn't know how fast Cam was because I think Moff was in the car then. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and then it was those three guys at the end. And Brock was there as well, a little bit behind, but Brody, I think, was holding up Chaz for a fair bit, and then once Chaz got through, when the safety car thing blocked Brody, um, that's when I knew Chaz was going to be the challenger. But so right. give us a sense of what those like last 20, 30 laps are like um, in terms of fatigue and your focus and just where you want to sort of get yourself. He wasn't fatigued. He'd done 30 laps up to the last. Yeah, the last with 100 to go, he'd only done 30. Yeah. So he, he, there's no way. Right. If he says, oh, yeah, I was fatigued, don't believe it. No chance. No. He'd done nothing at that point. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, it was OK. But no, no, I had to make up for your penalty. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Like I had to make up for your qualifying penalty at the start of the race. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was OK. Probably the hardest laps, like, I always compare to 2020. 2020 was 60 laps of qualifying with Cam, and that was, like, the most intense racing I've ever done. I probably did three laps flat out in this race after one of the safety cars when Chaz was behind, and I did, I think, three, maybe even four low sixes in a row, and Chaz just gave up, and then I went back to doing high sixes. Yeah. So, yeah, I did probably three laps, and then that was it. Then we just back to managing. But as soon as, like, I think Chaz, you know, you can tell, he always has the eyes on and headlights on. I did those three laps, and his headlights turned off. I went, all right, yeah. job done. Yeah. Um, and then we just had to bring it home. I guess the other challenging part, too, I mean, you see we had eight safety cars in total for the race. You just don't know what's going to happen next. And so you, how do you sort of forecast where you want to put yourself to make sure that should something happen that's completely out of your control, you're still in a position you need to be to be able to bring it home? Because, I mean, this really signalled the sprint to the end. And this was just such a, a massive moment for him right at the death. Yeah, it was a strange one, Will, where he went in there. I'm not surely sure what happened there, but this point... I don't point, think he is either. This point here, I mean, this restart, it was like, OK, this is where we find out what Chaz has got. And to Shane's point, it was a matter of, well, can you break him? And um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that it's entirely accurate that you actually broke him. The headlights turned off. <laughs> well, with the head, yeah, 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 but he was there. And um, I'm... I, you were far more comfortable than I was. And that, I actually miss, this is, you know, not being full-time anymore. It's this part of the race that I miss, like the, as he being in the car for these last sort of 15, 20 laps when it's full maximum attack, full pressure. Um, so sitting in the garage at this part of the race, no fun. No, no. fun at all. Yeah, tell me what it's like. Oh, what, it sucks. For you, but also <laughs> for the team around you, I mean, what is the level of anxiety for the engineering group and for the spectators? Because that's really when... The garages start to get full, isn't oh, it? The, the Everyone garage wants doesn't to watch breathe. What's Here, happening? Here, the garage is not breathing. Like, absolutely not breathing, because you know, okay, Chaz is behind us. We feel like he's won. He's the car that's got the speed. When you start seeing those sorts of things, when you know he's really pushing and making mistakes and costing him time, you go, okay, maybe, maybe we've got him covered, but you never really know. Like, you never really know about this. I mean, old mate made a couple of mistakes right here at Forest Elbow, he kept bowling a wide, and that sort of probably kept Chaz interested, um, but yeah, the garage is just, it's literally sitting on the side of its chair, just waiting for these last 15, 20 laps to play out. And you do, you feel far more comfortable in the car, like he's probably sitting here going, oh, no worries, he's got it under control. And you do, you feel far more comfortable in the car when you've got it under control, because you know what you're doing and how you're managing it, whereas in the garage you've got no idea. So you just put a lot of faith into the guy that's driving the race car and, you know, fortunately Shane's got a bit of form at that. <laughs> are you aware at all of what's happening in your rear vision mirror at this point or are you eyes forward? Uh, no, I was definitely, as I said, I managed Chaz, but then, yeah, there was Brody and Cam at that point. So, yeah, mm. I knew the guys I was racing and knew that no one had any fuel issues or anything. We're all racing to the end, so. And we're all pitting within a lap or two of each other, yep. so. It was a straight, straight race. And, yeah, just always focused on directly who's behind me and just tried to be as smooth as I could. So do you enjoy the final lap then when you know you've sort of got it in hand? No, no, just <laughs> down the last corner. Yeah, get through the last corner. <laughs> yeah, you just never know, right? Yeah. It's Bathurst. This was a really pivotal moment, though, given this was really the final farewell for Holden. Had any of those thoughts kind of come into your mind in the back end of the race or even in the lead-up 
to the race. How how important, I guess, was that theme to the campaign last year? Not really, because we did it in 2020. <laughs> and was, sure. Yeah, we, we were the last official factory effort and, yep. yeah, we had that amazing moment with the flag after the finish and we had the thanking the Holden fans on the side and everything. So, yeah, that was kind of it for me, whereas this one is just cherry on top. I guess we won Holden's last two Bathurst or something, if you want to put it like that. But, yep. um, yeah, it was Adelaide was more important for that, I guess. Yeah, for sure. But you could definitely feel it through the crowd. I mean, they were on their feet oh, yeah, at yeah. this point. And given COVID, too, that we yep. hadn't really had a crowd of this size for a couple of years, at what point did you actually take a breath and think, OK, we're OK? Now, like, when he was leaving the chase yep. uh, and got good drive off the chase, it was like, yep, yeah, OK, we got this covered. So it's like that point where you leave the monitors in the garage and you go out the pit wall because you go, oh, he's got one corner left, you'll have that under control. So, yeah, I mean... I even when I was driving and I was fortunate enough to cross the line at the end of the race when you have success, it was sort of, you didn't believe anything until you left the chase. And then it was like, okay, right, no, surely I can do one corner and get that right <laughs> and get it over the line. So yeah, um, yeah, I think the, the Holden thing, with Shane, like Shane mentioned, I think 2020 was the big deal because that was the oh. year of the announcement and Holden shutting down. Um, but for the fans, obviously seeing a Holden product cross the line for the last time, I think that was a pretty big deal for the fans. So you like a burnout, Shane, and we've, <laughs> yeah. we've seen your full spectrum of what they look like, doing one at Bathurst after winning, <laughs> you know, the pinnacle of the sport. Mm. Tell us what it's like. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, but it all <laughs> sort of just goes into a blur. But, um, Does it? Yeah, this, the podium was probably the cool thing here. Like 2020 obviously meant a lot, but we didn't get the podium with all the people. So yeah. I've been up there Th luckily a few times before, but never on the top step. And, um, yeah, to have it with a whole front straight of people was, was pretty cool. Yeah, the energy that day was just incredible. What do you remember about those moments, though, when you're standing there? Does it, does it happen really quickly? Do you take a moment? Now that you guys have actually had plenty of experience standing up there, you, Garth Tanner, a five-time Bathurst 1000 champion, do you take one minute to kind of soak it all in or does it just happen? I remember saying to Shane, like, before you go out, like, your life's about to change. Like, literally, when you walk through the, that door, your life's about to change. So when we walked out the second time for here, it's more about just taking the moment in and, and like Shane mentioned, like, having a front straight full of fans. Like, probably, I probably appreciated this podium more than any of the others that I've had up there because you just walk out and just feel the energy. It, it's, it was really cool. It was really cool. I had a silly smile on my face and that sort of stayed on there for the rest of the day. So I feel like every time we go to Mount Panorama, there's always a lesson to learn. Even though you guys have been racing there for decades, you still always learn something. So what was the lesson in 2022? Oh, um, I don't know. I haven't really sat back and, and looked and 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 digested that to that point. It, like you say, there's always something to learn. For me, it was probably um, I was really patient in the early part. Um, so it was probably the the that having that mindset was probably for me. It was like reaffirmed. Probably didn't learn that, but reaffirmed that she's not going to be one in the first hundred kilometres. It was making if you've got a fast car and you're in a good team with a good teammate. The first 100 kilometres don't matter. It's about making sure you're in a good position for the last 250k, and, and that's certainly what we did. For you, Shane? Uh, I don't think I learnt anything specific. It's just you just build that experience and the calmness and know that anything could happen. Like at the start, when it started spitting, Garth gave up a couple of spots to... There's a couple of younger guys going flat out and then, you know, dried up. We didn't see them for the rest of the day. <laughs> like, I'm so, not sure where they finished, but yeah. it wasn't in front of us. <laughs> it's, just, it's a long day and anything can happen and you have to be there at the end, as Gus mm. said. So it's just patience and keeping the car straight and mechanically sound till the end. A two-time Bathurst 1000 champion, a five-time Bathurst 1000 champion. What is it about the race, about the day, about the moment, about standing on the podium that makes it so intoxicating? for you? Why do you want to keep coming back year after year? Uh, well, for me, it's, a, it's the biggest part of the championship. You always get that question, Bathurst or championship? And for me, it's uh, no question the championship. And this is 300 points on one day, so you put, it can change the outcome of the year so much. So there's so much effort into this race, but um, yeah, the short term 
excitement, I guess, around winning it is, is the, a feeling not like no other, but you have a good day, that's 300 points to the championship. So, yeah, it's, it means a lot for that. Why do you keep coming back, Garth Tander? I grew up watching this race with my dad on the couch. And the history of this race is so important in the Australian sporting landscape. So we often say in the lead up to Bathurst that it's, it's held in the same regard as the Boxing Day Test, um, as a state of origin or the Melbourne Cup. You know, it's, there's, there's really, you know, four or five really high level sporting events that Australians love. And Bathurst is one of those. And you don't have to be a motorsport fan to sit down and take in some part of Bathurst. There's, you know, we know the TV numbers are huge around Bathurst. So that's because people have a passing interest in high level sporting events in Australia. I don't watch any horse racing except for the Melbourne Cup. And it's the same with motorsport. There'll be people that don't watch any motorsport throughout the year, but they'll have a passing interest in Bathurst and what takes place over the course of that day. So it's entrenched in Australian sport. It has a huge amount of history. There's not been one Bathurst 1000 that hasn't had some sort of weird storyline that takes place throughout the course of the day. And it's one of those sporting <laughs> events that can absolutely make or break a career. And uh, to, I've been lucky to be part of it for a long time and I am, feel very fortunate to still be part of it. So that, for me, is why Bathurst is so special. I, f for me, starting Bathurst, just turning up and doing laps at Bathurst was a highlight. Starting my first one was a highlight. Having success is the absolute cherry on the cake. Yep, it's either ultimate triumph or heartbreak, <laughs> isn't yeah. it? It's one or the other when it comes to Bathurst. Second sucks at Bathurst, <laughs> doesn't I mean, have you, I've finished third, I've finished second, I think. Yeah, I've finished second a couple of times. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It's all about winning. <laughs> Bathurst is about winning. Absolutely. And you just never know what might happen next. Thanks for catching up. Cheers. Good luck on the mountain this year. Cheers.